we'll go ahead and 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 begin and uh, look at the Psalms a little bit tonight. So let's pray. God, thank you for gathering us together for the good friendship we have and the good health. Uh, be with each of our families represented here with all of us. Uh, be with us as we learn uh, together and share together what you would have us or to teach us tonight. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> well, one of these days we'll get through this 119th Psalm. <laughs> I think it's longer than Amos. But anyway, we'll <laughs> we will see. But um, we are on, uh, we're in verse 49 in the Hebrew alphabet of Zion. And um, we're going to look at that and then a little bit of, uh, we'll look at, uh, at, at Heth, which is the next little section. Um, but uh, Zion, as I was reading this, the last um, couple of days, uh, it, I guess the theme of this section through verse 56 is that uh, about God's word is that God's word can be our comfort and our guide, uh, whatever our circumstances might be. And the psalmist is kind of reflecting on uh, how uh, God's word comforts him and strengthens him in times of difficulty. <clears throat> and as I was uh, looking at it, reading through it, and studying it a little bit, it, it was amazing. It's, it matches up a little bit, and I, I won't, well, I'm going to take a different angle anyway on Sunday. But I was uh, thinking a lot about Stephen, because we're going to talk about uh, Stephen on Sunday, and of course, um, Stephen being one of the first uh, Christian martyrs, and how much he, um, it seemed that he relied and trusted uh, one, I guess, in his relationship with Christ, and two, uh, in, in God's word during his uh, trial period there in front of the Sanhedrin and uh, as uh, he was stoned to death. And so there's a little bit of parallel I saw there. So maybe keep something like that in mind or something maybe difficult you've gone through. But the psalmist begins, remember your word to your servant for you have given me hope. Uh, my comfort in my suffering is this, your promise preserves my life. <clears throat> so as the psalmist is in a, a dire way for whatever reason, we've learned earlier in the 119th Psalm, it seems that he's in some type of, of position where he may be being scoffed at, ridiculed, persecuted for his uh, very faithful life. <clears throat> and he says here, um, you know, you've given me hope and I need my hope in you, especially when I'm going through difficult times. And, he, you know, it, it's as if he's saying, the hope I have in you comes from your word and from the long life I've had abiding in your word, uh, memorizing your word, living out your precepts, uh, your teachings. Oh, hey, Shay, sorry, just saw you. We're in verse 49 of Psalm 119. <clears throat> So um, he is probably being uh, arrogantly mocked is probably what's happening here. 
And so your promise preserves my life. And um, maybe it's not a situation where we're mocked or ridiculed or, or suffer. We, we seem not to go through too many days like that as Americans, which we're grateful for. Um, but it just may be another instance in your life or something that you're going through that's uncomfortable or that you just want to get through it or you want it to be over. And uh, really, uh, the old, you see it as a suffering. And uh, what the psalmist is saying is, hopefully you and I can find some comfort in the midst of that, leaning back on our relationship with the Lord that comes uh, from his word. Um, I guess sometimes when I've gone through situations like that, or maybe it's a, it's been a health situation in my life, I, I try to think, well, you know, supposedly this is all going to pass in a week to 10 days. I can get through it. <laughs> yeah, I can get through it. Lord, help me, help me to get through it. I, I, I know things can get better. And I'm going to remember your word to me. I'm going to remember your promise to me and that you've comforted me in sufferings before. And um, many times, I don't know if I'm tricking my mind or just going back to my spiritual uh, leaning in my spiritual belief, which I hope is what's happening. And then he mentions again in 51, what's, what's happening. The arrogant mock me unmercifully, but I do not turn from your law. Whatever difficult circumstance that's afflicting us at the moment, uh, in this case, uh, being mocked, maybe it's something different for you, is that uh, because when God's word and law and precepts and teachings have been planted so deep in us, we're not going to turn back. Uh, something temporary that we're going through is not going to cause us to forsake our relationship with the Lord. And we mentioned Stephen in the beginning. Uh, certainly uh, in that extreme case, he would have had every human <laughs> cause and right to say, wow, this is a new faith in Jesus. I, I haven't even been this long enough to really believe that this is really true or not. Maybe this is a sign that it's not. I'm going to forsake this. But he trust and believes in that Jesus is risen so fervently that he that even though he's going through a trial, he doesn't turn back. And that's the steadfastness I see in the psalmist. Um, I remember, <clears throat> Lord, your ancient laws, and I find comfort in them. Ancient, your ancient laws. Um, it's uh, as if uh, what he's saying is God's law, God's word, which is the same thing, is it's not fickle. God's word and law is, doesn't mean this today and that tomorrow. Uh, the, the Bible as a whole, God's character is not one way in Genesis and another way in Samuel, or in Amos, or Jeremiah, uh, or Matthew, or uh, in Paul's writings. But God's word's not fickle. God is the same. God's character remains the same. It's, so God's word is grounded in his unchanging moral character. And so we can count on God. We can depend on his word. If we saw uh, God um, 
treating or favoring one person over another or turning a blind eye to a sin here but coming down hard on it there. We would have probably less trust in the word. But God is faithful and God never changes. And I think that's what the psalmist is saying here. I remember, Lord, your ancient laws. I find comfort in them. In fact, so much is he, and we said this last Sunday in the sermon, he's so much in love with God, in, in love with God's word. God's word is becoming so much a part of him that when he sees or witnesses those that totally disregard God, and his law and his morals that he uses the word or my version says in in verse 53 indignation grips me because of the wicked who have forsaken your law um, i believe in your law i live your law it's so much a part of my life that it doesn't take me long to have indignation, to have, to get a little angry, to get upset when I witness injustice, when I witness mistreatment of other fellow brothers and sisters, um, when I see someone that's being taken advantage of, uh, when I see someone that's not loved when um, they really haven't done anything to deserve um, somebody hating on them. You know, that, uh, you know, that hurts me, but he's saying it goes beyond hurt. I get a little indignant, <laughs> a little angry at that because I live in God's word uh, so much. It awakens almost like that kind of thing awakens a righteous anger in me. And um, I have an abhorrence to me. And um, maybe you've experienced that. I, I guess I've seen news clips and or hear stories. And I just, you know, it just hits me wrong sometimes when people are so it just seems like they're living or treating someone or functioning or behaving in such a way that's so anti um, the way Jesus taught us. I don't know if you ever experienced that or not. Uh, sometimes you get so, in, in indig so much indignation and distaste for that, I often feel guilty that I've had that feeling. <laughs> but it comes on you so quickly. And that's kind of the depth of a relationship that I was sensing from the psalmist, that his life is just so much into the Lord. Um, and so therefore, the opposite of that is how he goes on in verse 54. Uh, Your decrees are the theme of my song wherever I lie. So wherever I am uh, versus the person who uh, has no relationship whatsoever with God to the point where they don't know they're disappointing or, um, or making God weep with their behavior. The opposite of that is your decrees, your word is the theme of my song. It's my life. It's what makes me tick. That's the opposite of that lifestyle. In the night, Lord, I remember your name, uh, that I keep your law. This has been my practice. I obey your precepts. Um, I could almost hear Joshua saying, you know, Lord, as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. You know, I've, 
I've decided, I've committed to, for my life, uh, to be based on you and my relationship with you. It's almost like a recommitment at the end of this section. And uh, he goes from, I'm being mocked, I'm being persecuted, I've maybe wavered on leaving you. Um, but yet I remember how angry I get when I see others abandon you. So I'm recommitting. Yes, he's got, he convinces himself. Yes, Lord, I'm going back to your word, to your law, to, your, to my relationship with you. I'll obey your precepts. <laughs> and so he kind of uh, continues uh, this theme in the next section of Heth is that uh, of the Lord being dwelling as he dwells at home. Uh, he's talking about uh, the Lord is this poet's true homestead uh, because God's law that fills all of the earth is what gives him security. It's what gives him joy. And so God's promises have become his hope and God's righteousness and God's laws is what gives him delight. It's almost like um, it's where we all want to be. We, we want our relationship with God to be this dear. So the way he says it, and he begins in verse 57, you are my portion, Lord. I have promised to obey your words. You are my portion. Now, um, historically, this might help us identify who the writer of the psalm is, or at least what he does. If you think back to when the Israelites inherited the promised land, um, all the tribes were given land except one tribe. You remember who that was? The, of the Levites. Yeah, the Levites were the priestly tribe. And so they actually, and that was Aaron's uh, tribe, uh, they were not actually given any geographical territory. Um, they were given the responsibility of ministry to the people. Uh, they were to be welcomed anywhere and everywhere. But uh, it was, uh, they were not given property. And so th their portion in scripture in Old Testament where it talks about uh, what their inheritance was, their portion was the presence of the Lord the ministry of the Lord. And so the psalmist says, you are my portion, Lord. It, it almost maybe identifies him. He may be from the priestly tribe, a priest, a, a Levite. I promise to obey your words. Now, devotionally and, and spiritually, um, he goes on to tell us what, what it means for our inheritance is a portion from the Lord. Our, our portion from the Lord is not material either, is it? It's salvation, it's grace from Jesus Christ. We also get a spiritual portion of grace from God. And so he goes on a little bit to explain what that, what that means. I have sought your face with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. I don't know if we remember, we said earlier, when we talked about what promise means in the psalm here, is God's salvation act. God's uh, act of, of conveying, of giving his promise to us. Um, and for us as Christians, again, that's our salvation through Jesus. 
but I've sought your face with all my heart. That's my life. And when the Old Testament talks about with all my heart, heart in Hebrew thought, heart is where the will is. It's where we will to do something. It's, it's in our heart where we truly decide we will to make a final decision. Uh, we get the phrase, I made a heartfelt decision. Heart is where we give our allegiance. It's where uh, we tame or we control our emotions or we, we love God with all of our emotions, with all of our mind, with all of our will. Um, I love you with all my heart. <laughs> We've said that in romantic ways through the years. But he says, I sought your face with all my heart. I give all of my being, all of my being to you. Therefore, be gracious to me. Um, I've considered my ways, he says. And as he considers his ways, his human ways, his sinful ways, when I considered my ways, I turned my steps to your statutes. You know, I realized I cannot do this on my own. Um, I, I cannot be the person, the man, the woman. You want me to be, oh God, with my own will through my own wicked heart. I need your statutes. I need your law. I need your precepts. I need your promises. I need your salvation. So I will hasten. I'll not delay to obey your commands. I'll run quickly to you. Uh, and though the wicked bind me with ropes, I will not forget your law. Again, that theme of oppression. Even though I may be oppressed, even though I may have difficult days, uh, even though I, some days my human nature will say, is this worth it to follow God? I still won't fall away. I know your love is so sure in me. I'll come back to you and you will bring me back. Uh, at midnight, I rise to give you thanks for your righteous laws. I am a friend to all who fear you, to all who follow your precepts. The earth is filled with your love, Lord. Teach me your decrees. Your love your, uh, be, is good for me. It teaches me knowledge. Uh, your law teaches me good judgment. Um, I give you thanks uh, so much that um, the um, I, I befriend those who fear you. I want to be around those who are like you. And we're good friends. Um, I think he's becoming friends with the Lord. And, and friends with God himself. Um, so again, you know, like we said, I think this 119 Psalm is teaching us, and especially in this section is, I'm amazed, as I said Sunday morning, we've said more, just how, um, how much in love and affectionate this psalmist is with God. I wish my relationship was that deep. Um, did you think of other passages or thoughts or, or anything come to your mind as we talked about some of these themes tonight that you thought of? Sometimes you have much better thoughts than me. <laughs> Not tonight. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Good. Well, as always, the Lord's word was rich to us. 
and uh, something we can count on and, uh, and depend on.